And you are on Collision on 99.9 Voice FM and in the studio with me right now, I have the boys from Monks of Malinois. I have... I've got the three J's here with me at the moment. (laughs) I've got Joe, John and Josh sitting here. Well done. Vikram's (laughs) stepped out to save his vocal cords for his performances. (laughs) But he is in the house. He is. (laughs) He's just a shy one. How are you guys going anyway? Yeah, we're good. 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 Really good. good. How was the trip down from Sydney? Uh, Interesting. Interesting, yeah. It's probably the best way to describe it. Drove through a godstorm on just... As we were going into Albury, um, and then nearly broke down 40 minutes out from Melbourne. So, interesting. So, <laughs> well, you guys, you you don't fly around the country, you usually drive, yeah? Um, I suppose it depends where we're going and depends what gear we need to take and stuff. But obviously, driving's the the cheaper alternative and often the more practical alternative because it means that if you're staying somewhere, you can move around, no problem. You know, like mm. we're able to drive from Melbourne to Ballarat today and we're driving to Bendigo tomorrow, whereas if we've flown, we would have been in a bit of strife. We wouldn't be able to do that. So, Yeah. 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 Getting Road cabs around well. is not, yeah. not the best thing. Yeah. No. And but, plus we have most of our own gear, which is a good. Yeah. Yeah. Because you guys, you have played at Grace Darling. Yeah, we played at the Grace Melbourne. Darling last night. Yeah. yeah. How did that go? It was good. Yeah. Great really show. Good. Yeah, we had a lot happy, of fun. Yeah, went, yeah. But then, see, having said that, you guys, you've been, you spent a lot of time in America too, haven't you? We have, yeah. Yeah. We did last year. We spent three months there last year. How are things uh, go? Because you won an LA Music Award a couple of years ago. Yeah, a couple of years ago. It was, um, yeah. I mean, it's like a, it's a promotional vehicle, really. But, um, yeah, it was great exposure for us. And I think that kind of kicked off, kicked off us being over there and, you know, our interests and yeah. certain people, you know, and that's kind of the reason we started touring over there. You know, there's quite mm. a big rock scene over there. And, you know, I think it's something to do with our music as well. Maybe it fits better over there, but, you know, we're keeping our options open. Yeah. Yeah, oh, it was well, an amazing experience over there. <laughs> yeah, insane. Getting yeah. commercial exposure in Australia is a strange animal to yes. yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's uh, that it is. <laughs> We've been at it for five years now. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll keep oh, going. Oh, we'll never going, stop here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. this is how I'm You'll home make for. it in Australia as soon as you've made it in America. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, we figure. That's, a, that's yeah. often what happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a shame, but yeah. Yeah. no, it's good that you are being you know, well-received over there too. Yeah, Yeah. it was a really good experience over there. We're we're hoping to get back at some stage this year. So, yeah. Actually, we will be in April. Um, We've got two showcase events in late April. Yeah, that's right. So, that's going to be great. So, running up the frequent fly points. Yeah, Yeah. I think we must have a fair few at the moment. (laughs) (laughs) Something like that. (laughs) And is this the dream for you guys? Like, you all want to be in an internationally su- touring band? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I suppose the dream changes every time you reach a milestone. So I, five years ago, we would have said we would like to be a band touring the US because that's the greatest thing ever. But, you know, now, yeah, we want to so, be making some money. We want to be reaching bigger audiences, playing bigger shows. Yeah, our dream is to be on stadium tour. So that's kind of where we're yeah. at at the moment, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Doing everything we can. Just uh, We understand now it's a real big building process. So mm. we're just... So, you know, digging our feet in for the long haul. I guess actually yeah. a lot of young people dream of being in a band and touring and all that, but they forget the part about making money, which yeah. is very difficult to do. Yeah. Well, and it's, it's getting it, more and more difficult as well. It's so. just about yeah. being a sustainable thing. You're, you're a business mm. at the end of the day. Um, yeah. So. <laughs> That's, that must be hard for the creative minds to navigate too. Uh, yeah, it can be sometimes. Like it, it can put it, it can sort of well yeah i mean you don't want to forget why you're writing music you know sometimes you get the oh there's not a hook in the first 30 seconds that type of thing and you've got to remove yourself from that and say why are we writing music are we writing music that we enjoy or are we writing music that uh, is going to grab the the attention of radio so Mm. it's it's always that delicate tightrope we have to walk it's just finding a balance i think finding a balance between what music we we would naturally write as a group or what we'd naturally produce as a group to finding a way to make that music accessible to the mass audience basically and to to move a lot of people so it's just finding a way of channeling that creative process to be able to connect with people basically and it's, it is a fine line sometimes between like writing music that you we you know that we naturally write and and thinking about all the other aspects of how we're going to get connect to an audience how we're going to get our music across to an audience but that's something that's one of the the challenges of being in a band and it's probably one of the the better challenges of being in a band, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's all about. I mean, nothing's easy, so. 
And the dream yeah. of showing up to a gig and people wearing your face on their T-shirts. Oh, yeah. That was <laughs> a dream. That, see, that's everyone talks about their dream of being on a big stage, but that was my dream. Yeah, if you want to know what we're talking about, yesterday. head on to Cat's Facebook and check out the photo. <laughs> yeah, so basically. <laughs> I had six mates follow me down from Sydney and rock up to our show last night, the Grace Darling wearing T-shirts of my face. <laughs> <laughs> and they will be on sale at your next gig. <laughs> oh, yeah, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. Think about We're thinking about it, but I think what we might do now is take away from my face and go towards maybe Vikram's yeah. face, getting a really bad photo of him, putting it on there, then getting a really bad photo of Josh and putting it on there, <laughs> and then maybe a really bad photo of Joe. But if that you can be, find one. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say it's pretty easy to find. <laughs> <laughs> we could do a collage of Joe's faces on here. Well, at the moment, it is... Joe and John doing all the speaking, and you two guys are actually brothers. Yeah. Yeah, we and are. I, I thought I'd come across a, a hip-hop track that you'd done, but that's your younger brother. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, there's four of us in, uh, at home at the moment. The youngest is still at school, but then the second youngest is, yeah, he's doing pretty well. He just released a debut single as a, yeah, hip-hop and Yeah, keep an eye on Nick Delahoy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's mm. doing really well. So I think the music's kind of running through the blood <laughs> a little bit. And because it is one of your brothers that manages you, isn't it? It's no, it's our father actually. Oh, right. <laughs> That's, yeah, yeah, so it's a big family affair. So um, then, is there music in the family? Like, was he in a band or something? No, or? he wasn't. I mean, I, I think everyone like in the family's maybe got a little bit of musical talent in them. I think my uncle plays bass. I don't know, but uh, there's a few bands, cousins, and stuff like that. Yeah. but not that I know of. Not huge. Well, in saying that, yeah, well, but- I think we're all the same. I mean. Josh, his family loves music. His brother used to play guitar. Um, Vikram's bro- younger brother picked up the guitar after he saw Vikram. So, and his dad owned a guitar. So, I guess we've all had it. We all grew up with good music, and we all wanted to. Uh, that's something actually. All our families listen to good music, so something I guess that's where it came yeah. from. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is like a lot of bands actually that I've spoken to, even in America and everywhere, have done it not because their family were musicians, but because of the music they listened to. Growing up, yeah. And mm. a lot of that was the diversity in the commercial music, which is something that we've lost now. Yeah, um, yeah, maybe. A, a yeah. little bit, yeah. People are, are actually picking it up from their older siblings and that more so now than from right, what yeah. the music they're listening mm, to. Yeah. Well, that's I think that's understandable to an extent with with some of the mediocrity of some of the music that's coming out at the moment. So there's some really good music and there's some, yeah, hmm. yeah, some ordinary music coming out, some very... I suppose um, it's always going to be like that, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and I suppose yeah. it's the same thing, like where, where we look back, you know, our fathers listen to bands like Pink Floyd, Wishbone Ash, Led Zeppelin, all that sort of thing. I suppose that's only picking three bands of the, like, you know, the 70s and the 80s and there were plenty of other pop acts and stuff. So it's the same sort of deal, I suppose. It's just picking the, the music that... You know, we like and we enjoy and, yeah. Mm. Speaking of which, actually, you did do quite an epic trilogy. Was it about two years ago? Yeah. Now? yeah. Sky in the Dark Night, yeah. Yeah. So that obviously wasn't something you were doing for radio. <laughs> no, I mean, our, our distributor, um, MGM, uh, he, Sab, he had an idea. Well, I mean, we always thought it was an epic track and we always wanted to do more with it, but... He, he sort of said, you know, this is a great track. Why don't you do this whole trilogy thing as a kind of a stamp against radio, you know, to say, you know, this is what we are about and we don't care if you play us or not. We're going to continue to write music like this. And I think that's something that's fundamental to us. You know, although we certainly getting pushed to write radio stuff, um, there's always that element to us that we want to explore and it's important to us. Mm. Yeah, I think the ironic thing is some radio did pick it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it was it was good, yeah. 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 No, it was a, a great trilogy, actually. Yeah. And I think the middle track was a good one to play on its own. Yeah, yeah. definitely, yeah. Well, it originated from that track, actually. So yeah. the, the first two sections were kind of you know, thematic expansions of the, the middle track. Right. Yeah. So, and at the moment, you you do have a, a single that you're pushing Called yes. Hideaway. Is that from an EP or an album? Um, that's from Turn the People. It was a <laughs> remix of a song called Pulse. Um, and we, we pretty much, not, not that we weren't happy with the original, but just thought, how can we make this a bit more commercially viable and explore some um, just layering the sound a bit more? And that we came up with Hideaway. And yeah. All right. Yeah. So it is a new version of Pulse. Yes, that's absolutely. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's the same song, just a revamp. <laughs> as yeah. such. Oh, right. Yeah. A rearrangement and. 
some uh, some other parts added to it and a new mix and yeah awesome and did you do that for australia or for america both you're about to both. Head over well there. we do everything uh, for both fronts really so i mean we had a radio release planned for the u.s but um we also did one the same time here so mm. yeah awesome and yeah so turn the people that has been out now for a a year? Yeah, just about. Yeah, we've oh, at least in March. Like so last much year. longer than a year. Yeah. And uh-huh. so Hideaway isn't actually on that. You've no. got Pulse on that. Yeah, no. Pulse is on that. That's right. Yeah. Right. So Hideaway is just. You'll find all of them on iTunes somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm sure if you buy one, you'll lead to the other and hopefully buy that one. Yeah. And then buy all of the other music. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. And then make your friends buy it. Yeah. Do you guys <laughs> test your music before you record it? Do you take it out live? Oh, always, yeah. yeah. I mean, we try to as much as possible. Some of the Turn the People stuff, we're, we're under quite tight times constraints. So, we wrote it, we demoed it, um, and then we recorded it and then sort of went back and learnt how to play it, um, which is challenging in itself. But I guess, you know, if, if we're in the position where we've written the song in the rehearsal studio and then we can try it live, then we, we tend to do that as much as possible. Is and that what happened to Pulse? Did you not uh, get a chance to really not, test that? I mean, we we wrote it, recorded it, learned how to play it. <laughs> it's one of those ones. Um, and then we pretty much gigged it all around the US, um, all around here for a year. I mean, we've been playing... I know the album's only a year old, but we've been playing these songs maybe two years now. So we played it in its original form and then, uh, you know, based on some interest on that potentially being a radio song, we went back into the studio and sat down and thought, you know, how can we make this this song a little bit more concise and a little bit more, more catching straight up. So, yeah. Mm. It wasn't a live thing, no. <laughs> <laughs> and are you working on a new album? We are, yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. Well, uh, we're not sure whether it's going to be an album, um, but right now we're focusing on new music and we're focusing on a new single. So, uh, we're just, you know, we've got quite a few tracks lying around and we're not sure totally where where we're going with it just at the moment. So we're really trying to find that one song, um, one or two songs, and then really develop from there. But, yeah, we're sitting on about 20 songs at the moment that we're working on. Because yeah. you, I think you guys have been pretty much like one of my most consistent bands at releasing music yeah. on a regular basis. Yeah. Do you have a home studio? Yes, we, we do. do. Yeah, yeah. We do it all yeah. at home, yeah. I mean, most half the turn the people was done in the US when we were over there. Um, the rest of it was done at done at home, yeah. yeah. And that's good though, because um, a few people who've got home studios end up spending so much time trying to get everything perfect, they never release anything. Yeah. But you guys have got a home studio, and you're actually using it and releasing on a regular yeah. basis. Well, I mean, we're really lucky. We've got a great team behind us, and we're working with quite a few people in the US. You know, on the A and R front, so we do have that sounding board. So, I mean, we we are perfectionists in the sense that we want to make everything perfect, and that's why we've been sitting on quite a bit of material for a long time now. But at the same time, you have to, you have to, if you've released material, you have to give it the time it needs. Um, you would turn the people. We've been sitting on that two years now. It's been released a year ago, but um, you had to give that at the chance it needed, really. And then, yeah, I don't know. And you move on from there, and I think. On that front as well, I suppose that's why we've gone back and done uh, revisited songs like Pulse, and we revisited another song called Tear Your Head Apart, which is the single before that. And we we did an edit of that that we pushed out to radio because we we sort of look back at the music and we say, oh well, there there's a lot of potential in this song, but when we initially recorded it, it we you know we might have been so focused on on a, a set structure that that's that's the way we recorded it. But then when you look back with it. Eight months later, with fresh ears, you can hear some things that you can you can change around, and, yeah. and that's where the perfectionist thing comes in. I yeah, suppose. I guess you got to remove yourself from it because you have to put music out no matter what. So you just got to do it. You know, if it you've got two weeks to write a song and finish it, you've you know, at some point you're not always going to be happy with, with the result, but you've got to back it, and uh, that's I guess that's what we try and do as much as possible. Hmm. Yeah. Awesome. I think actually it might be a good time to put one of your recorded tracks on and get Vikram in here and get ready to do one of yeah. your live tracks. Absolutely. Yeah, sounds, sounds good. good. So which one of your recorded tracks do you want me to play? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> what do you feel like playing? Yeah. <laughs> <We're> calling. <laughs> um, nothing too old. <laughs> Ghost stories? Yeah, ghost Actually, stories. That's a good I mean, one. That is a good one to play. Yeah, yeah, I, think. Or, yeah. I like that one. We played that one last night. Yeah. All right. So we will listen to Monks of Malinois with ghost stories and we'll come back and we're going to make them 
and they keep and do an acoustic for me, <laughs> uh, for us. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, this is Vikram from Monks of Melamore, and you're listening to Collision on Voice FM. You are back on Collision on 99.9 Voice FM with Cat Unwrapped and the boys from Monks of Malinois. And we've dragged Vikram into the studio. Say hello. Hi, how you doing? And oh, Josh as well. <laughs> G'day. <laughs> <laughs> what I was saying earlier about the hand span and maybe people with bigger hand spans have louder voices is not true. I've discovered no. that with you guys. It's definitely not true. Yeah. <laughs> but, the yeah. Vikram is actually quite small. Yeah. <laughs> all we, right, all right. We actually just heard their track, Ghost Stories, and even heard a ghost story from the boys while the mics were off. <laughs> Maybe we'll share that with you a bit later, but right now we're going to get them to do an acoustic. So. Uh, yep, yeah, this, uh, this is our song, You Shine, so uh, enjoy.
that was beautiful. Thank you very much. People listening at home know how spoiled I get in here when I've actually got this live happening in front of me. And, well, you guys, you are very, very professional and I'm assuming that that comes across definitely in your live shows. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean... I don't know. I mean, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, there's, over there's, time, it has. I think. I think. I think. We, yeah. We sometimes. Aspire. Yeah. We, some, we want to. We want to not take it too seriously and always have fun, but you know, be a professional band. Have well. serious yeah. fun. Yeah. Well, Josh is definitely one. You know, he keeps the fun alive on tour for sure. But he's also very professional. <laughs> See now, now we're almost getting to the um, the in car experiences of the tour. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and mostly intellectual conversations between Josh and Vikram. Well, I wouldn't call them conversations; I would call them <laughs> arguments about. <laughs> no, I would. I would call them the UN's. Like, yeah, I don't heated know. discussions, maybe. Uh, so that's the and truth. Then, yes, that's, that's it. why they don't want to talk on the show as yeah, much, that, really, because yeah. they do all their talking in the car. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's right. If you were interviewing them, you'd probably break down to an, uh, a heated discussion about what the most popular sport in the world was. That's what they talked about oh. yesterday. And, oh. uh, but it doesn't. And, and, and about causes that we're passionate about. The UN's like top. I don't know what it's called. I don't know. We well, talk about changing. politics we don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All of a sudden, yeah, there's, there's two experts on politics. In Who car. writes the lyrics? Uh, Vikram. Vikram. Mm. Yeah. There you does, are. does any of that political, I don't know, passion ever come out in the music? Uh, not so much, no. No, I, I would reserve judgment on, on politics till a time where I probably know a little bit more Thank or you. I'm more well-versed. But, yeah, I, it's probably inevitable to a certain degree that some things come out, but not in any deliberate way or I'm not, um, I'm not trying to make a political yeah. comment. Actually, I'll ask, the song Ghost Stories, did that yeah. come from your ghost story in Seattle? Actually, it was before, and that was that song. Um, Will, our old singer, had already written the verses, so I just kind of I'd done the chorus and we tagged that together. But um, yeah, that was beforehand. But it definitely kind of maybe meant more to us after our Seattle experience. I was fine. I was hoping I'd see a ghost, but I didn't really see anything. <laughs> so that was more uh, Joe and our, our friend Monty. <laughs> I think we we better tell people at home the ghost story now. Ah, uh, is. There's not much of a ghost story from my perspective. I just took a, a selfie when I was sleeping on the bed and there was like a ghoul face next to me. <laughs> like, it's there. I'll yeah, show yeah, you. Yeah, I'll yeah, show yeah, you. Yeah, wait, 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 wait. this back to the moment where so, 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 yeah. I was taking a selfie in bed well, alone. I wanted to, I wanted <laughs> to upload. He said he was sleeping. I wanted to I'm upload. Saying, no, let's not no it, was, it, was, it was meant to be like <laughs> sleepless in Seattle, a selfie. Oh my god! <laughs> you didn't make your, you didn't. You stop, you're not making it better, bro. <laughs> Did you bring a shovel in with you to dig that hole? Just Listen, deep, if uh, I didn't take that selfie, wouldn't we wouldn't have that that ghost image? So, but we would you know what? I did it. I did the band a favor. <laughs> so we should be thanking online? you. Um, I will put it online now. I think you know, yeah, just for people to have a look at, yeah. Yeah. and they can yeah, they can pass their own judgment whether there's a ghost or not in that pillow. Right. That's, what you can you know, actually do is post your own selfies from your own bed and just kind of make I, it. No, we can not, start something and listen, start a trend. Yeah. <laughs> You're making it sound like it's worse than it is. It's just my face. <laughs> no, no, that is pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> there's, n there's nothing sinister about that photo except for the ghost. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I reckon that um, you should make him do one an in-bed selfie at every hotel you stay at. All right, so I think that's now a thing. We don't, we don't need time to do that. <laughs> <laughs> this is garbage. Go on my Insta and there's no selfies on there. Please. I've, I'm a notorious <laughs> non-selfie taker. Yeah. Look at your, look at the... Okay, go on to Facebook and check the, the shirt face thing. Oh, that yeah. is a pure selfie. That one, <laughs> selfie. You're wearing a selfie on your shirt. As much as we say we don't, we do love selfies. All four of us, we're selfie, we're selfie people. Yeah. If you go on eat any of our Facebooks or whatever, they're a, a collection of selfies. But what kind are they? Are they like serious selfies? It doesn't uh, matter. It's a selfie. Selfie is a selfie. Yeah, some no makeup selfies. recently been getting there. into the selfie sticks. I mean, they're oh. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Don't don't judge until you've tried it. Yeah. 
it's just goodbye, like professional photographers and hello uh, selfie sticks. We don't need anyone anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Professional band photo. All right, sweet. Four of us. <laughs> selfie stick. We're sweet. Self sustainable is what we're going for. We're trying to cut cost and be professional at the same yeah. time. <laughs> Have you cost. ever made a video on a phone? On a phone. Oh, that's all we video yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> we do a lot. Oh, not like no, music I mean, video. Not a music, music video. video. No, no. no, no I mean, we no. might record a little acoustic jam or something, but yeah. um, all our music videos are done. By the book. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, which is probably a good thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can I ask, are you guys still able to have day jobs or have to have day jobs? Yeah. Yeah, well, we'd, we kind of like, we got to a bit of a crossroad mid last year where we were going to the States for three months. And up until that point, we kind of, we were, we were a bit stop start in the way we operated. I held a full time job. Josh was still studying. Vikram was studying. Vikram was actually studying overseas at this point. So he was coming back for three months, then going back overseas for three months. And so it was a bit stop start. But we got to a bit of a crossword point at mid last year. And yeah, so, so we were like, you know, uh, Vikram was finished. Vikram had finished studying. Josh had six months to go. We were about to travel for three months to the States. So uh, I made a call. I, I, I left work. Vikram made a call and. and packed up his things and moved back to Australia after the US and uh, since then we're, we're holding jobs but um, like I'm holding a pub job a few days a week Josh is doing some cleaning Joe's um, day job is um, production and writes mu- film and ad music anyway so that's always been his his work and yeah that's what we kind of the move that we've made now that if we're going to give this a go for the next year or two years or however long you know and that's kind of what we have to do to make it happen yeah yeah first world problem yeah <laughs> <laughs> what so far has been your like your most memorable experience? Uh, definitely last year's tour was an incredible experience. I mean, it's tiring. You know, you, you're not really. We've seen a lot of America, but we've only really seen motels and um, you know, and highways. But the US is it was incredible. We played some huge venues and in front of huge crowds and with bands that we liked growing up as you know as teenagers. So yeah, the US. <laughs> that yeah. tour, that US tour was incredible. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think like different parts of that US tour were pretty oh, memorable. Yeah. yeah like, We've got just, a lot of stories, but yeah. I don't know how many we can go into. No. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just some like, yeah. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. I, I like the, the way that you say you don't know how many you can go into. It yeah, I don't know if yeah. I want I mean, to go into any. <laughs> well, no, no, you know what, we're, we're a pretty well-behaved bunch, I think, compared to some, like what what bands in the seventies and eighties were up to. Oh, I mean, yeah, we weren't yeah. we weren't hiring Rolls Royces and driving through hotels and stuff like that. So well, it that's happened one story. time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we won't <laughs> talk about that. You know, stopped, so. yeah, <laughs> we'll put a car in the pool and then we like the rental. More, the more rental of the stories are just embarrassing. So that's what I mean. Yeah. It was just nice to uh, to have the experience, as I was saying. The fans there, like they love they love live music so much. So we, when we're playing gigs every day of the week, the amount of people that would come had never heard us before, and then to get yeah. a positive response yeah. was top notch. Out of the smallest Midwest towns, as well, you know, yeah. that's where we had the biggest responses. You know, yeah. you, you drive into this town that's you know I don't know, there's no one there, nothing there, and you rock up to the venue, and there's you know the whole whole place turns up to this gig, so it's pretty cool. crazy yeah yeah i was places like um oklahoma uh kentucky wichita uh, kansas yeah kansas um michigan was like that they're, Flint, they're michigan, places yeah. yeah just areas where there's when you compare them against your new yorks and your um Seattle's, big cities yeah, yeah your la's where it's say for it if in portland for instance you might have there might be a band in one venue and a band like and then a bigger band in the next venue and another bigger band in the other venue so everyone's got so much choice to go you know i'm going to go to this band tonight or i'm going to stay home tonight whereas in these smaller areas we did six shows with seven dust that was probably our biggest tour and when a band like seven dust a big band that's been around for 20 years or 20 odd years is in your town and you're in a small town kind of yeah everyone just goes so we were very lucky to be able to play in front of sometimes like one one and a half to two thousand people because we're in these smaller towns and yeah it was an amazing experience absolutely amazing wow how did yeah. you get on the seven dust tour um we had a an a, agent yeah, yeah, yeah an agent that was on the lookout for us to for tours and the seven dust tour actually came about quite funny we were actually booked to come home on the second of august and it was mid-july and we got a call from home and from my manager saying we've just been offered a seven like six shows with seven dust so i'm gonna re yeah reschedule your tickets flights, yeah. yeah you're coming home at the end of august and you're going on tour with seven dust we're just like okay oh my god <laughs> are you kidding <laughs> like this band's like headline sound wave and you know is oh, amazing yeah 
Yeah. So what were Seven Dust like as people? Oh, and, all right, as people, you know, it's funny, like, uh, you know, some of these bands, we are the support band, so they're, they're so set in their ways. So, you know, we, we actually only met them maybe once or twice. We met, you know, guitarist here, bassist there, Settelo, you know, in passing, but um, we met them towards the end of the tour, Seven Dust, that is. Uh, when we were touring with Scott Stapp, we got pretty friendly with that band. And same with the Saving Able tour, but it just depends on the guys really because touring life is kind of hard. So you just got people just get in their ways and you have to respect that. And uh, so mm. and we're the same really, you know, there's not much you want to do other than relax before a show, you know, go to a hotel, sleep, have a shower and then play the show, get off stage and sit in a room. <laughs> yeah. But um, so I, I guess for those guys, they've been on the road so long that they just need to chill. Yeah. At the same time, though, when we did meet them, they were very nice boys. Oh, they're all great people. Yeah. yeah. Like, the, the singer, humble, very humble. Singer was very yeah. humble. Uh, guitarist, very humble, and had a, had some nice comments to say about us as well, which was a big boost for us. You know, as a young band. Yeah. Uh, like we had, yeah, everyone that we met on tour, all the bands and all the um, all the tour groups, like their um, all their tour managers and stuff, are all really nice people, and look, we're always looking out for the best of all the bands on tour, hmm. which is good. Yeah, I suppose with the hierarchy and that there, the fact that you got to meet them probably was a stamp of approval. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly right. Yeah, mm. and it was it was a really nice thing, I think, to hear some of the nice comments from Seven Dust members themselves and and just to have down-to-earth conversations with them just so, just before we... Even if it was we were just meeting just before our last show or just after our last show, you know, we had we, we talked about them wanting to come back to Australia and to play Soundwave and some of the obstacles in their way and all that kind of thing. So we actually have to have, able to have like a, a normal conversation because they're actually just normal dudes. But they've just been doing this for a long time. Mm, yeah, yeah, definitely awesome. So is there someone over there that you would like to like if you could? Who would be your pick if you could choose the band to tour with? Uh, I think for sure. I mean, uh, right now for us as a young band, we we're really trying to you know get with other younger bands that are seemingly cracking off you know bands like the neighborhood um um royal blood um we'd love and then obviously we'd love to tour with arctic monkeys muse those type of bands but really uh, the most important thing for us right now is to find a band a similar band going for this uh, similar age group similar target market and and tour with them i I think that's yeah now we had that experience with seven dust they're a 20 year old band and the the fans are a bit older and what you know while the experience was great and um, we grew a lot you know this time around we're really looking to um, hone in on our crowd and find out who they are yeah know, yeah and reach them yeah I, th- I think a dream yeah. a dream band would be someone like Muse or oh uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would be unreal yeah yeah well. If any of them are listening from Muse. Yeah, please, <laughs> sure Matthew they are. Bellamy, please. <laughs> no, I don't, yeah. Well, I think uh, while we do have Vikram and Josh here, we should maybe do the other acoustic. Yeah, so. that's good to me. Right, shall we play Pulse? Yes. Or Hideaway? Well, it's oh, not called Pulse now, is it? But yeah, so we're, this is Hideaway. This is our latest single. We have a new video for it. Uh, check it out on YouTube. And this is an acoustic version for you.
got for none, don't we all know? The rules can bend and break away. Think of the stakes. Heat stick burning on the news and type of growing on your shifting faces. As time goes on and on, isn't it wrong? Where we run? Find some sun. I don't feel what's real. And all the same old things. You hide away in a place you never. Beautiful. That was Hideaway, which is your latest release, which, yep. as you mentioned, I'm not sure if we discussed that on air, that it is actually a re... I think we did. A yeah, yeah, yeah. Pulse. Yeah, yep. yeah, it is. Which is on Turn the People, which is your latest album. That's right, yeah. Which is available... Through MGM distribution, I'm assuming. Yeah, it's, you yes. should be able to, um, if they don't have it in a JB Hi-Fi store, you should be able to order it. But um, more importantly, it's on all the iTunes and Bandcamps and SoundCloud so, and YouTube, so it should be out there. <laughs> and monksofmalinois.com is your website. Yes, That's it right, is. right, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so make sure you check out like uh, the news page, uh, Instagram, you know, as, we, as we're on tour throughout this month and next month and in the US again in April. Um, yeah, we'll be sharing some stuff. Some more acoustic performances, maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah. And Twitter, uh, Facebook, you know, keep up to date. Uh, and we are working on some new music. When that's going to be released, I have no idea. But obviously, we'll be sharing some updates on our social media pages. So keep an eye out. Yeah. Also, make sure you come down to one of the shows on this tour. <laughs> yeah. I was going to ask it, but I won't. Vikram oh, no, wanted go me to on, ask. Go on. Oh, ask you're just going to talk about my hat. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a what hat. Is, what is the obsession with the hat? Why know. did he want me to I ask bought a, you about I bought it? a $5 hat from H&M and I wear it at shows because I don't want to do my hair. And um, they pay me out for it. No. So. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's go back a couple of steps here. Wait, start I think the hat is more than a $5 hat that makes you not want to have to do your hair. I think there's a little bit more to that. I think it accentuates, when you wear a black shirt, it accentuates the, the fact that your muscles are getting bigger because uh, you're working you, out. Let's move on, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> let, the hat's actually not $5. It was about $105. Yeah, it does. It makes him look better in selfies. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. 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 You can edit all this out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the rest of the tour, where have we still got to play? Um, well, we're off to Bendigo tomorrow, which is kind of, that'll end the, the Victorian part. Unfortunately, we couldn't make it out to Ballarat for a show tonight or for or to Geelong, but hopefully we're coming back down in May or June and we can do that. And then we're, next weekend, we're heading up to Brisbane. We're stopping at Yamba on the way. It'll be nice. We haven't been there before. So that's the 20th. Yeah, the 20th and the 21st, and the 21st we're playing at Rick's Bar in Brisbane. And then the following week we're playing more locally um, in Manly on the 25th at Moonshine Bar and upstairs the, uh, the Stain, which is a really cool venue, so that one should be really cool. And then we are also heading... We're, Adelaide. Yeah, we're, we haven't we're been down to Adelaide, Adelaide yeah. so this is pretty exciting for us. We're playing at the Crown and Anchor on the 14th. Yeah, then we've got um, we're playing a show in Newcastle on the twentieth, and we have our local well, like our home show at the Vanguard, which should be a good one. It's a really nice venue in Newtown and Sydney. We've got a couple of really good bands playing with us that night, and then the following back up week, to Brisbane. back up to Brisbane again at Black Bear Lodge, which should also be a good one because two of the three bands we're playing with at the Vanguard were also playing with at that show. So yeah, and no Perth, no Perth this time around. Um, we we do want to look to go to Perth. It's it's just a it's a long way, and um, yeah, eventually we will make it out there. Hopefully in the next the next run, um, 
know I, I know I know a lot of people or a fair few people in Perth. We've got some family friends and family, and we'll make it out. To yeah, we'll make it out eventually. Yeah. yeah. Possibly in WA that maybe it's harder to get people into venues because of the weather. Yeah. Uh, I, I, well, that's, yeah. I think well, I suppose, that, uh, you know, from what we've heard, it's a good scene down there because, you know, you've got the mining towns and, you know, sort of like how the Midwest is in America. People watch shows, people go out to pubs. So I think we will get down there next, next tour. Yeah. So... I'll give you a scenario. What would you do if you went to a mining town in Perth to play a gig and one of the big miners took your hat? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, I probably wouldn't wear this hat because <laughs> he'd fight him. He'd fight him. I look like a skater kid. 100%. Uh, he'd fight him. <laughs> for everyone out there, this hey, is a flat cap. Like, this is nothing. <laughs> and everyone's thinking Everyone, like, yeah. it's an Akuba or something. It's not... <laughs> It's not about the hat, it's about when you put on the hat, how you become. Yeah, it's a different persona. More, yeah. yeah. It's like, you know, Clark oh. Kent, he takes off his glasses and he's Superman. You put the hat on and all of a sudden, Batman. Just amazing Batman. things. Yeah. <laughs> well, what I can I say? I think Vikram just called you a Superman. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I heard as well. Yeah. <laughs> and so, well, you don't have, like, an exact plan for your next album it's like the other one's still only a year old yeah yeah you are writing tracks so do you have a lot of music yeah we have a heap of music well i mean ever since turn the people we've been writing music i think that's something we do all the time is we write we write we always want to move forward and you know maybe it's not always the best thing but um so we have a heap of material that we're working on we don't have an idea of release times or anything like that but we certainly have an idea of um where we want to be going with it based on where we were and so it's just a matter of finding the right yeah the right mix of songs and yeah I, think I mean, I mean most, we're open to everything yeah. at the moment. It's not really a, an album market, so I guess we're just focusing on tr- trying to find the next single. Yeah. Mm. I think most most artists can sort of appreciate that kind of the, the similar sort of scenario where they, you know, they, when, when they release music, it's all about the next release almost straight away. Like, so, particularly for something like Turn the People where a lot of the songs have been written for a long time. So when we finally got it out, it was like, it, it was a very big moment for us to be, you know, this is our debut album and everything. And it was awesome to get it out. But at the same time, almost straight away in, in all of our minds, and I know that I think a lot of artists can relate to this, it, it's always about the, the next set of music. So that's why we, we've continually kind of written ever since Turn the People. But, yeah, we obviously have to do what's best for the... Um, for, for no, the I mean, it's, history, inherent, right? it's, a, well. it's a creative drive. And I think there's, you know, we have to promote the old material and we love the old material, we're always proud of it. But, you know, we just you just keep going. I think that's yeah. it. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I in, think with yeah. media in Australia these days too, I think an album is a calling card this is what we have as a band yeah and then the media like the higher up media and that will start actually watching you once yeah. you've produced an album Before yeah i think that, it, they yeah don't care. i think it is a huge <laughs> step like well for for us in 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 my or for me anyway in my head like i, I always like it's always about the album it's always about um the collection of songs right i i, I as much as a singles, it is a singles market now, and it's becoming more and more so a singles market. It's still as a as a music lover, it's always about. It's for me my favorite pastimes with music is to listen to an album from start to finish, or listen to a, an artist, a, a catalog of music by an artist. It's not. I won't like listen. I won't typically listen to one single, then another single by another band, another single by another band. So for me, uh, the best way to portray a piece of art through music is it's through an album there's no other better way of doing it but you've also got to consider the the other side of things the the commercially viable side of things of whether or not an album's going to sell and whether or not if you're putting an album out some music's going to get lost because most people do listen for that one song or that two or those two songs so it's just about finding that balance but there will be there will be an, an album some stage this year whether it's a, a, sh- a shortened album whether it's a s- six or seven track or whether it's a, a full-blown one we're not sure yet we're not sure of the date yet but it will be at some stage this year definitely All right, then you do have america in april of course we do yeah we're doing uh, one called Muse Expo in, in LA um, and we're also doing the Rock Summit as well around the same time. So hopefully yeah, hopefully that goes well. That's kind of what uh, 
where we were working towards during this tour is really solidifying that that set and ha- you know getting an idea of where we want to go and how how we want to present ourselves at this this showcase. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of a we've done one showcase before, but this is yeah this one would be the biggest one. So mm-hmm. yeah, exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Nerve wracking but exciting. It sounds yeah. like you're um like LA are sort of taking you under their wing a bit. Uh, it's a it's a cool place, LA. Yeah. Yeah. We like it. Um it's a lot like home as well. It's people are more relaxed. Weather's nice, you still got beaches. So if we're gonna go to uh in America, uh we just like LA. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. And place. the Midwest, yeah. Um and I will once again tell people to find you at monksofmalinois.com. And I did, I do remember asking Joe the first time I interviewed you, but for the people who didn't hear that interview, uh, Monks of Malinois, the name. Oh, I mean, let's face yeah. it, it's not the usual name. Um, you can call us the monks if you want. <laughs> uh, but Which it's, I have done. Yeah. <laughs> um, Maybe Wiki it. It's some video game. I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know. We had this just, time. Just work. Then. Yeah, I reckon it's better to say go look it, go look it up instead of um. Well, I, I think it's probably better to say like. Why, it's whatever why, you want. Yeah, it to whatever be. you want it to be. You go think of a story. <laughs> yeah. Go think of a bizarre story. There was a period of time whenever we got asked, we just we give give the interviewer a different answer, and then we kind of got, <laughs> got a it bit got tired a of doing bit. that. Yeah. And yeah. So I think yeah, there there are the origins of the of the name, but uh, in a sense that it's it's just a name. It's and, just and it's, it, what, it's, it's a bit of fun, yeah. really, yeah. and um, it's memorable. So. <laughs> and the thing is that when you do get really famous and that you won't just have fans, you'll have religious followers. It's well, that's like, the thing. We're trying to... It could be a, a new cult. church. That's yeah. what we are. We are a cult. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, not... T-shirts with his face. Yeah, I know. I mean, that's just the start of things. I've got much bigger things is in plan. Is that what the whole... There's been... Well, no. Of, no. There's been a whole thing about beards in this band. It's like, if you can't grow a beard, you can't be in the band. Is, yeah. that, is that the Jesus complex? <laughs> no, 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 no. Absolutely no. not. <laughs> no. Nothing to do. No. I think more such... Uh, we're hipsters. Not really. No, we're not. I should point out that not everyone in the band has a beard at this point in time. It's more no. because we're all... Somewhat ethnic, and so beards are natural. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not optional. It's more like we don't want to shave <laughs> yeah. because, yeah, because you can't be bothered. <laughs> Pretty much, it's because like I don't want the rash. I can't. I just can't be bothered shaving every two hours. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, <laughs> someone someone who buys a hat so they don't have to brush their hair would not want to shave very often. Uh, no, I hope we're not betraying the wrong image of us. We're we're actually very clean human they beings. Are. You know, we're very, very well kept. Cut. And I do my hair. No, <laughs> I've only just bought this hat, so I don't know why I'm copying so much uh, for it. But you know, whatever. the truth is, under there, he's tried to dye it some really weird colour that went <laughs> yeah, wrong. Right. I'll just settle this right now. <laughs> oh, look at that lovely go. head of hair. Yeah. Look at that. There we are. All of a sudden, you're not cool anymore. <laughs> you, actually, you do look younger. Yeah. Yeah. It's strange. You look a lot younger. With that and now Straight he, now he's a rapper. Yeah. <laughs> he's put it on back to front. There we go. I feel better. M and M. So yeah, monksofmalinois.com, and you are monks of Malinois on Facebook. It is so good of you to come down here and no, thank, thank you very much for having us. First time Been in Ballarat. Talking to you guys for a few years now. Yeah. yeah. Just first interviewed you and watching your career you you do produce some pretty amazing music it's oh thank you very much i'm surprised that commercial radio in australia hasn't picked up on it yet they will (laughs) here's yeah here's fingers crossed that they will touch wood yeah and you get a chance to see these guys on tour right now before they get too big yeah, so go to Monks of Malinois on Facebook or monksofmalinois.com and find out those tour dates. Hopefully we're going to see them back in Melbourne again before they head over to America in April. Yes. The album Turn the People is available now. Yep. And we're going to have to find one of your recorded tracks to leave with tonight. What oh, you, yeah, okay. Have you, what, got, have you got the full Turn the People album? I do have it. Yeah, have you do got you have the, Turn the People the... The track is that what you yeah. yeah. Do you have turned the people the the track? I have it. Okay, so it's the always one of track from the album. Mm, yeah, people. yeah. That was always one of our 
um, sort of favourite tracks on the album. So, yeah. Thank you very much. And I do look forward to actually catching you play live next time you do come to town. And it has been absolutely fantastic having you guys in here. And you know you're always welcome. Oh, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Really thank you so that. much. Hats and all. Beard uh, <laughs> maybe I'll have a different hat next time. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I'll do my hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I like. I hope you don't go through any major storms again on your way home. Uh, yeah. Yeah, fingers crossed. And it was, uh, it was, it was actually kind of cool. <laughs> we had the um, we had the interstellar soundtrack like on full blast, and just like pretending like we were a going through a vortex in yeah. space. Or something <laughs> like also, check out Instagram for that video coming yeah. soon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we were nerding out hardcore. Yeah. For <laughs> And yeah, this is the Monks of Malinois and the title track from their latest album, Turn the People. Make sure you do catch up with these guys live and get hold of the CD. Absolutely. Hi, this is Joe. Hey, this is John. Hi, this is Vikram. This is Josh from Monks of Malinois. And you're listening to Collision on Voice FM.